Ethel, as someone who is championing women in tech, what are the barriers that women are facing and how can investors and other industry players take a more proactive role in promoting these women? This is probably one of the questions I am most asked. Um, and part of it is, I almost have to pass the question in two parts. So there are, there are two sides to this, right? So there is, there is the sort of average access for women everywhere, right? So access and accessibility to technology and to the internet and to mobile phones. That's a huge, big issue, right? So um, we know, for instance, that, um, you know, the, the, the benchmark for ac accessibility, we know that mobile phones, um, even though there is a huge penetration of mobile phones in Africa, you will find that sometimes in a home there is one mobile phone and it, it sits with the husband and the woman gets to use it maybe once a while. Why, one of the, the, my lessons is when we were doing some work with the Gates Foundation, we, we worked in northern part of Ghana, and I've, just, I've, I've shared this story a couple of times, where we were working, we, um, this is a couple of years ago, where we needed to get health information in the hands of the poorest mothers. Um, and when we sat in Accra, which is the capital city of Ghana, and designed this thing, we, we had our, our major assumption was that the women had access to phones. And then when we went to the Northern Ghana, um, we were, we, one of the big things that we learned was that the husbands had the phones and the women had access to the phones in the evening, right? And that we had to recalibrate one, how we were going to share that data. So it was voice calls um, with sort of pre-recorded data versus, you know, text because there were sort of reading issues here. So there's a whole um, a big chunk there that has to do with access and accessibility to allow women in general to grow and develop using technologies for health, for business, and that and that bit, right? And that has to do with governments actually part making policies that bridge the urban rural divide. So that's one issue, and I'm not going to dwell on this because I've got to go to the other side, right? Which is the women that actually are in the industry that are building things that are entrepreneurs. Um, yes, it's less than 1% of women raising money. And part of it is um, that women are not necessarily building companies in uh, areas where uh, the VCs and angels find necessarily sex, right? And that's not the fault of women, it's just that VCs do not understand these spaces. So health tech, for instance, is a very interesting space where a lot of women are actually building, and some call it femtech, which building products that cater to the health of women. Um, VCs do not necessarily understand that space, but there's a huge potential there if you look at the numbers. And so part of it is VCs educating themselves on the spaces where women are congregating a lot versus demanding, which is I've heard this conversation, demanding that women build um, in spaces where VCs put more money. And the data does say that the, even in the spaces where VCs fund more, for FinTech, for instance, women who still build in there still do not get enough money. So that's, that's, a, you know, that's another conversation for another day. But part of what I suppose venture capital and angels and, and, and support networks need to do is there's work need to, that needs to be done around creating a pipeline of women that are fundable. And that's one of the things that Women in Tech does want to concentrate on is how do we, how do we find the women that are, are building the businesses that are potentially going to be you know, the, the big money players and preparing them for funding. Because the one thing being a, a high potential, there is an expectation from venture capitalists, uh, that especially women in, in Sub-Saharan Africa, um, that they're, they're, you know, businesses need to be a certain way to fund them. And there is a list each year. There's one, two, three, or we're not funding. And you, we can't work like that. We've got to be able to say, we're, do, we're going upstream and doing a bit more of the work 
before we actually start finding the women. And part of that is making, you know, making sure that these women structure their businesses, these women understand what it means in venture capital, what, what they understand around sales and, and, and building, like all that work. And that for us, I think it's a priority um, is to go upstream and work with the women. So we create a pipeline of fundable women um, for, for generations to come.